given that this is a new lab, I thought I'd go over what it is you'll be doing um, for the LT spice part. So what we have here is something to test or measure tau in the time domain. And so we'll have a square wave. And over here, we'll measure tau via the cutoff frequency method. So there's a sample file there. And what I've done is I've set the pulse width to 150 micro, uh, microseconds, which is longer than 5 tau, and the period to double that. Um, even 5 tau um, is what we use to, you know, to say that a signal has arrived. But as we'll see on the function generator, or on the oscilloscope, that actually you want it, when you're actually testing it, you want to let it to go more than 5 tau. But still, 5 tau is an important thing. So to measure, measure this, we can do two things. I can use a single cursor and just find where I'm 0.99. Three, which if you look at the lab manual, sorry, okay, nine nine three three is um, if the input is one volt, that's the voltage that you get out, and so. Um, I'm pretty close to that right here. And so that's 79.71 microseconds. And so divide that by five, and I'd have tau. The other way, which the oscilloscope uses, is the rise time method. And you go from 10% of the signal. I'm having trouble there. So that's about, it's almost 10%. I'll let you play with it. And then here you go to 90% and you find the difference, which in this case is 35 microseconds. And you multiply that by 0.455 and that gives you tau. The derivation of that is in the lab manual. So that's the time, you know, a time domain uh, measurement of tau. Um, word of warning, make sure that your periods are long enough. I'm just going to make a ridiculously short period to show you what it's like when it's wrong. Okay, so I might be, see, um, I'm not actually going to one, so the oscilloscope would take 90% of this, and 10% of this final value, which is not 1 volt, it is um, 0.874 volts, or yeah, about 0.82. So if you keep doing your, so the oscilloscope won't know that, and it'll just keep giving you, uh, it'll give you an answer, but it won't be the right one. Now over here, we're doing the same thing, um, where we're me trying to measure the same thing by finding the 3 dB point. Um, so I move this till I get a magnitude of about 3 and phase of minus 45. And this is giving me a frequency of close to 10 kilohertz. And I can calculate the time constant from there. Now there's something that you need to know about these function generators. All right, and I'm going to put this back to where it was so that you can see. Uh, is that they have a 50 ohms series impedance. Now you can um, 
just right click on the voltage parasitic properties series resistance and just put 50 ohms all right and now we're going to run it and i'm also going to plot the input and notice how it's changed and then over here, I'm going to put a series resistance of 50 as well. Oh, okay. I don't think I clicked run the last time. Notice how V1, and I'm just going to put a little delay on that so you can see. Uh, uh, 20 microseconds so we can see it that this this should have been a square wave right but notice it kind of has it's kind of square but then it's got this rolling here right that's because we got a voltage division going on with 50 ohms and then the sum of this and this resistance is very close to that and so it's um, affecting it all right and so it's it's really warped and so really I'm you're doing this on purpose but the 16k one will look a lot better now over here doesn't look too different but um, let's let's actually take the gain all right I don't know if you could see but it just slightly changed so I'm gonna plot the gain and then v2 now because the input is 1 v2 is usually you know the gain but notice how that in fact they're different now v2 over v1 is actually um, will give you the original wave because even though v1 is reduced I'm taking the ratio of these two and it works. And so uh, the oscilloscope Bode plot um, where I'm taking these two ratios actually isn't as affected by the 50 ohm series resistance. All right. And just to show you as a quick thing is if you when you go to 16 and point Here should have the same time constant, but notice now it's it's sharper. You, if we zoom in, there's still um, still this voltage division problem. And yeah, if I went to 160k and um, even smaller, now it's really hard to see if, if at all yeah a little bit I mean that's that's gonna be in the noise anyway that's what you have to do um, you can use different value different ratios but you really want something with a small R and a large R and trying to get a time constant uh, trying to get a cutoff frequency of around 10 kilohertz if you have to go down to 8 or up to 12 uh, based on the parts in the lab, that's okay.